am Amy Schmidt, Project Director at Comagine Health. Today I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Sarah Woolsey. We're coming to you from our virtual home offices in Nevada and Utah to talk about infection prevention, what it is, how it's evolving, and how it helps to keep our communities and some of our most vulnerable citizens safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Woolsey is Comagine Health's Medical Director for Quality Improvement a board certified family medicine physician with 20 years experience caring for underserved populations. She was appointed to the American Academy of Family Medicine's Commission on Quality and Practice in 2018. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me today. Nice to see you, Amy, and nice to talk about this. Let's talk about the topic that's on everyone's minds these days, how to prevent infections like COVID-19 in the first place. How is COVID changing the field of infection prevention? Well, you know, first, what is infection prevention? You know, infection prevention is an evidence-based approach designed to prevent harm to healthcare workers and patients. Um, so it's evidence-based, but it's also gonna be tailored to the setting. What do I think has changed? I think it has shined a huge light on the gaps in training and the availability of the right protective equipment, of the practicality of preventing a virus that we don't even know we have and we're already spreading it. So it's really, really having us up our game in all settings. Can you briefly describe what makes for a good infection prevention program? Like what are some of the key factors that one needs to consider in any setting? Yeah, you know, I would say first, like I mentioned before, it has to be evidence-based. There has to be training based on evidence. And with COVID-19, the science is getting updated. So we need to be able to adapt to what's emerging and what's best practice. We also want to have what we teach be understandable in the setting. We need it to be something that's reproducible, that people can do again and again, that we can watch and measure. And if it's not going well, improve it right there with the input of the frontline folks so that it works for them in the constraints that they're dealing with. Um, the other thing I would say is that if something's going really well, we get it to be done over and over again, we reinforce that. Um, sometimes it takes one-on-one -on -one training to really make it work. At Comagine, our work often focuses on the most vulnerable members of our communities. Who's most at risk when outbreaks such as COVID occurs and how does infection prevention help fill those gaps? Yeah, um, so let's see. I would say settings where folks work or live close together. You know, we use the word congregate settings, but it's really where, where are people close together? Are they able to follow some of the basic practices like hand washing? That could be a challenge for folks that may be bed bound in a long-term care facility. Or if someone has a memory problem, they can't remember to follow a simple step that's gonna keep them safe. So I would say those groups are a big, big challenge. A second one is any place um, that there's aerosolized generalizing procedures. So COVID-19 is, is, is a respiratory, it's easily spread through the air. So any place that folks are giving nebulizers or treatments that get that into the air, we need to make sure that the staff know how to use their equipment, know how to sanitize it, know how to store it. They avoid contaminating or bringing that infection to their other coworkers and thus other patients. And then the last piece I would say, Amy, for um, important groups are folks that just haven't done this much, like an employer that's trying to figure out how to make sure everybody washes their hands or that people are six feet apart. People who don't know what they don't know, I would say that is a group that I'd wanna focus on and really hone their skills and teach them some, some new things. I like to think there's often a silver lining to be found during challenging times like these. What are we learning from COVID that will change infection prevention practices for the better? Um, you know, I think it's that transmissibility. COVID-19 is so easy to transmit that we have to really up our training, up our use of our protective equipment. We need to make sure that everybody's doing this all the time. And I think that's going to help when winter comes and the flu comes, when we have another infection that we, you know, we will battle in the future. People have really paid attention to what makes the most difference in how we do this in our various settings and how do we keep people safe. So I think it's really focusing attention that will give us future gain as we, um, we deal with the, whatever the next infection is. Thanks, Sarah, for your insights today and your optimism about the future. And remember everyone, the real secret to infection prevention, wash your hands a lot. Thanks, Amy. All right.